Oh, hey, Keanu, is that you? Are you doing okay? You're not too hurt by Matthew Perry's insults he threw at you this week? No, Johnny, I'm fine. I'm just curious, do you still remember what to do after a result like that? Give me a moment, it'll come to me. Everybody's hands go up, way up, as Nashville Predators on the back of a three assist third period by one Mac Duchesne exact a measure of revenge against the St. Louis Blues, one of their biggest division arch rivals, and defeat them six to two Thursday night inside Bridge Sonoria. They stopped the bleeding and capped their losing streak at five games. Last time the St. Louis Blues played the Preds inside Bridgestone Arena was April 17th of this year, back in the spring. And I'm sure many of you diehard Preds fans remember that game, but have tried to suppress it because of the damage it did to your eyes having to watch the Easter Sunday Massacre. For those who don't remember, the final score in that game, after already being down 7-1 after 2, was 8-3 after a full 60 minutes. I had trouble keeping down my Easter Sunday dinner. But we're not going to go back to that. That was last season. This is this season. The Preds didn't do anything I suggested they do after the Philly loss of a coaching change somebody being called up, somebody major being traded. No, they just decided to L. Tovenin healthy scratch and to put Cody Glass into a top six role. This game didn't start off on the right foot and gave me visions of that Easter Sunday pass because just over a minute in, Blues in the Pred zone off of a face-off win off of a tip, Robert Thomas scores and the Preds are already down one nothing. In the moment out loud to my brother who was watching the game with me, I was like, this is a team that is playing on back-to-back -back nights. It's third game in four nights of the current trend that they are on. And they both lost those games. Preds, wake up! Preds continuing to drag themselves into this game like they just crowd out of bed because they give the Blues the first power play opportunity of the game and the Preds would get one of the best scoring chances as Cole Smith has a clear cut breakaway on Thomas Grice who's a net for the Blues but oh Grice keeps the puck out. Preds with the slight edge in shots halfway through the first period. They do get some quality power play time but just can't convert. When is that drought on the power play going to end and then be more consistent with the man advantage. But the one thing that is consistent with the team last year and this year is when you do need a goal to spark your team, you go to the herd line. Just over three minutes left to go in the first period. Face off win inside the Blues zone. Puck comes back to Roman Yossi to Grice's left and he lets a shot go that carries a rebound to the Ox. Tanner Janot, and he gets it into a wide open cage and he buries it, tying this game at one. That seems to fire up the Preds for the remaining short amount of time that's left in the first period. They get the hunger to try and get the lead then and there before they have to go to the locker room for the first intermission. And they get a great chance, dig, 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 right in front of Grice, but no dice. And the game is tied at one after the first period. Preds with some good chances early in the second period. And one positive that I see that I am appreciating is again from that herd line, Yakov Trenin breaking up some good backdoor passes by the Blues before they can set anything up. That accumulated with Tanner Janot's continued offense. It's gonna be a sad day when the herd line eventually gets broken up because I see just a quick game stop to say that Tanner Janot eventually is going to have to because he has earned it possibly in the future top six minutes. Back to the game though as the Blues get awarded a power play and just as it's about to expire and the Preds are going to hear that guitar string strum on the PA system telling them that they're back to even strength. Nope the Blues have scored they retake the lead now up 2-1. After Braden Shen has scored to make it 2-1, the Preds take another penalty. Oh, Fabro, not your best 
ninth. And the Blues look to put the insurance goal away and maybe break the bread spirits knowing that they're very fragile after their current losing streak. But you see, Charles steps up his game and keeps his team only down by one. And that's very good that UC does that because this game is about to be taken over for the Preds by two very unlikely sources seconds apart from each other. Just under five minutes left to go in the second period. Philip Forsworth carries the puck and he's got it behind it and he gets it out to his captain, Roman Yossi, on a one time, takes a shot on that and it rebounds off of Thomas Grice. And lo and behold, who is there to pick up the rebound and backhand it into the net? It's Michael McCarron! The Preds have a 2-2 tie of the Blues! Oh, but we're not done yet because I said two unlikely heroes. McCarron's just won. 37 seconds later, here comes the former Blue, Zach Sanford, behind the Blues net and he backhands! Just tucks it home, bags it in, off of Grice. The Preds have their first lead of the game, up 3-2. Blues muster up some chances to try and tie this game back up again, but it's not enough. We reach the second intermission. Preds sitting on their 3-2 lead. Preds would take that energy that they built up at the end of the second period and take it with them into the final frame of this game. Just over a minute into the third period, you've got the three big money makers on offense paid to score goals for this team who are on a breakout. You've got Matt Duchesne coming down the right wing board. He turns, he sees Phil Forsberg who takes the pass from Duchesne, gets a shot on Grace, big juicy rebound. And lo and behold, guess who's right there in front to tip it home past Grace? It's Ryan Johansson. Preds have a 4-2 lead. Preds only two minutes later would get a great chance on the stick of Philip Forzer to extend their two goal lead to three goals, but Grice stops him and keeps the Blues in the game. We reach the halfway point in this game. Preds are still up by two, and as we've learned this season, the most dangerous lead for the Preds to have is a two goal lead in the third period. So many in the Preds fan base, plus me included, can be forgiven for the fact that we were totally expecting them to blow it again. But the boys in gold said, not tonight. Bad guy down below, you're not gonna take this victory away from us because with just over seven minutes left to go in regulation, Nathan Walker of the Blues decides to take a tripping penalty on Yakov Trenin. And on the ensuing faceoff, quick, crisp passes and there's a shot from the point by Roman Yossi and it goes straight into the blue paint with Mikhail Grinland and Matt Duchesne and Ryan Johansson all diving in there like they're diving for a loose fumble. Mine, 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 and it's in the net. Brent put the exclamation point on this game, even though it's not over with plenty of moments still left to go in the third. But you gotta think, a three goal lead is gonna be good. Prince now up 5-2. Blues would eventually pull Thomas Grice with about five minutes left to go in regulation, trying to see if they could salvage this game and try to climb back in it. Preds break out after a Blues chance in the Preds zone. Matt Duchesne is the puck here. He gets hauled down, but not before he has the presence of mind to get the puck over to Mikel Grenlin, who has a wide open path to the empty cage. He makes no doubt in this one. The losing streak is over. Mikel Grenlin puts it home. Preds win this one, tapping it off at 6-2. Big bounce back game for the Preds tonight. I didn't know if they had it in them coming into it. When you pile loss upon loss upon loss, you feel more and more depressed, wondering if you're ever going to win again because look at the Vancouver Canucks. Now, it's just one game. Nothing to write home about yet. The point of this now is to build on it. And you have the Washington Capitals, a pissed off team who just got shut out in Dallas Thursday night, coming into Bridgestone on Saturday night. Build on that, get some confidence because right after that, you have a five game West Coast road trip for the CMA Awards Festival through Canada, Seattle, and Finally, before you come home again, the team that swept you out of the playoffs last spring, Colorado. And hey, if there's anything else that I'm confident 
a little bit more after the night. That power play was pretty good, even though it only went one for two. So that is it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. As always, click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really like it. You can find my social media by clicking on a channel name. Tell all your friends about Redemption. Now, let's hope this result Thursday night against the Blues wasn't a facade and the Preds don't have a scare in store for us Saturday night before Halloween.